I've just come across um, something that caught my attention from the independent newspaper. I, um, I'm subscribed to it on Facebook, so I often get their updates. Um, the headline reads, Some Women's Stories Don't Have Happy Endings, and it shows the Disney character Snow White, um, a cartoon version of Snow White, um, basically lying on the ground. She's got a black eye, blood coming from her mouth, um, her little headband is off. It's um, quite a shocking image because you know you have this image of Snow White, sort of an innocent figure, an innocent image, and uh, it's from um, it says no violence against women. I'm not sure if that's from a particular charity or um, or what, but it just got me thinking about some of the wider issues of domestic violence. Um, from the outset, I want to make it very, very clear, in case I'm misunderstood, I think violence against women is utterly abhorrent. Um, as a man, I think it is... It, it sickens me that some men um, are prepared to do that. Um, it shows other images. It shows olive oil from Popeye. It shows Marge Simpson. Um, it says here... Uh, that's uh, Lewis Griffin from Family Guy. Basically, shows cartoon characters being beaten up, um, and it's by Italian artist and activist Alexandro Palumbo, 40, who is based in Milan. Um, I think it's a good idea, in so far as raising awareness is concerned of violence against women. But my question would be, why is it that violence against men is consistently overlooked? Now this isn't just a reactionary response because people will say, oh, you're just trying to deny that this is a problem. Absolutely not. I fully recognize it is a problem. So I have no issue whatsoever with it being raised. But I do take issue with the fact that the media, um, the independent is particularly guilty of this, um, routinely ignores male suffering whether that be male victims of domestic violence or the many other areas I can think of where there is overwhelmingly male suffering. I'll give you some examples. Uh, the majority of homeless people are men. The majority of inmates are men. Um, and by the way, I'm not saying they don't deserve to be where they are, but it shows that clearly there are circumstances that make men resort to crime more than women, which is something that needs to be addressed. Um, male suicides are higher. Um, in terms of parental custody, women are much more likely to get custody of children. These are all irrefutable facts. Um, now, no doubt people will throw back things and say, oh, well, women are more impacted in this way, in this way, in this way. But what I would say is this is not a competition. And I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of certain media sources like the Independent try to stir up this sort of battle, this gender war by promoting things like this. You know, I wouldn't have a problem with them promoting this if they just balanced out a bit and had, for example, a report on male homelessness. But they never do. And it does bug me. Um... It's difficult to talk about because you automatically get pigeonholed as a misogynist if you even talk about this subject. I don't know how to make this any clearer. I am not a misogynist. A misogynist is someone who hates women. I love women. And like I said, I abhor violence against women. But let's just talk about domestic violence for a minute. Um, one very important issue that is often overlooked is there's a perception that most victims are women. And my instinct is that is probably the case. I think probably there are more violent men than there are violent women. But maybe that is just a byproduct of living in a society that shows male violence much more. And it's, if you think that um, there are women not capable of being violent, you're incredibly naive. And it isn't just women who say this. There are a lot of men out there who are very smug about it and they're sort of like, oh, guys who get beaten up must be wimps. And they come out with things like, oh, a man who can't handle that is a uh, pussy and this sort of thing. So they're very sort of callous towards their fellow men. Um, 
but actually it's a lot harder for male victims because uh, a woman who's victim of domestic violence no one would blame her for standing up for herself I wouldn't blame her I would encourage her in fact no one would blame her but a male victim of domestic violence if he stood up for himself then everyone would just read into it and say oh well uh, he must be a violent man she's defending herself without actually considering actually maybe she is the one always provoking the violence in certain situations so in other words a male victim of domestic violence is in an impossible situation if he stands up for himself then he is using force people assume he must be a violent guy and if he doesn't stand up for himself then he gets laughed at and I'll give you another situation look at this scenario uh, if a man cheats on his wife or girlfriend with another woman uh, she then attacks him physically um, he feels guilty because of what he's done so he's not going to complain about it she feels vindicated because she's been hurt by the fact that she's been cheated on and society as a whole will basically say oh yeah she's right to do that but what if the situation was reversed what if in a moment of madness a man who actually is a good husband a good boyfriend in a moment of madness reacts to it in the wrong way and and attacks her now society would brand him a brute now just to be clear I'm not condoning that for a second violence is wrong but you can see that there are obvious double standards there you know if it's wrong for a man to respond to emotional pain with violence then it's also wrong for a woman to do that in other words if you're going to condemn a man for responding to being the victim of adultery with violence then also condemn women who do that it's not a mature adult way to deal with it if you've been a victim of adultery cheating I, I think I think that's a despicable thing for anyone to do but if you've been a victim of it then dump the person you don't need them in your life but then it's not that simple because you, if you're in marriage and there's children involved you can't just dump them I, I actually believe cheating is a form of emotional violence and I think in Western society is far too often overlooked now in the case of Islamic states you get situations like stoning for adulterers and then many cases they're actually victims of um, uh, rape and things like that but in Western society we almost go to the other extreme of basically just condoning adultery now I don't want to go off on a tangent here but I'm using that to because it is a problem in modern society and it's some of the it's something that creates emotional violence now before people sort of react to that let me be clear yet again and I think it's the third time I've said this in this video domestic violence is abhorrent violence against women is abhorrent you know the idea of any of my friends female friends being hurt by a man physically would make my blood boil being a man I would want to confront the guy uh, and personally I can't I believe it happens but I can't it's, the idea is alien to me the idea of using violence against a woman is alien to me so it is a huge problem in society but I think that we have been conditioned to believe that men male suffering is a trivial thing and it does bother me that we and it isn't just women a lot of men trivialize it I think as men we are guilty of trivializing suffering I mean I, I've done it myself you know honestly if I was watching a film if I see a guy get punched in a film it doesn't really bother me if I see a woman get punched in a film that would be like whoa so I'm saying this but even I subconsciously don't respond in the same way and I think we need to ask questions about that is it because men are seen as physically tougher because the average man is physically stronger I mean uh, you know I, I follow boxing and guys get hit all the time in that sport and you know it's part and parcel of what it is of course the obvious thing is in there is they're doing it voluntarily so maybe that's the wrong example but there's just something about 
violence against men or male suffering is massively, massively overlooked by media in countries like Britain. In other parts of the world, there is a pandemic of violence against women. And I'm not saying that to stir up cultural tensions, it's just a fact. You know, a few years ago there was an experiment done, and it's on YouTube, it showed a woman beating up her boyfriend in public, and it was gauging public responses. Almost everyone, without exception, who walked past either ignored it, in some cases even laughed at it. There was one woman who smugly laughed and said, oh, we probably deserved it. One police officer walked by, done nothing. That's an example of the sort of problem that is being faced by male victims of domestic violence. It is trivialised. Now, I always hear feminists come out and say, oh, we're not saying it doesn't happen. Uh, we don't condone it. But actually, you are condoning it. Because whenever male victims of domestic violence do speak out, feminists usually say, oh, they're probably abusers. They're probably using that as an excuse because they abuse women. In other words, they are actually denying that it even exists. So there's a very mixed approach from the feminist movement. On one hand, they're talking about equality, but they're trivialising male victims of violence. And they'll say, oh no, we're not doing that. But look at the evidence. Whenever um, men's rights groups have argued for, for example, uh, shelters for male victims of violence, feminists have stood in the way. If feminism is really about equality, then why is it no feminist comes out and say, yes, we should have funding for at least more than one shelter? I believe in the whole United Kingdom there is one shelter for male victims of domestic violence. That is clearly disgraceful. Whereas there's shelters all over the country for women. And I'm not saying there shouldn't be. In fact, there's one very close to where I live. I'm not saying there shouldn't be. It is good that uh, women have resources that they can turn to. I want them to. I want women to have help. But it's disgraceful that there's such a stigma around male victims that they cannot even get resources. I think that's very sad. Now, I often condemn The Sun, and uh, I do hate it as a newspaper, but to play the devil's advocate for a second, I will commend them. On one occasion they did feature this on their headline. Uh, they featured a report whereby there is a guy who you would not think is a pushover. Um, six foot guy, you know, I think he was a former dock worker or something. Uh, he was a man's man. Now, he was a victim of domestic violence. And he reported that uh, in that incident, his partner put out cigarettes on him. She threw emotional abuse at him and said he wasn't a real man, etc, etc, etc. And to be fair to them, they covered it. And, you know, I'm not endorsing the sun, I hate it, but... The point is, it happens. And feminists have to acknowledge it happens. Now, just a word about The Independent. I used to regard it as an objective newspaper, but it seems they really are trying to promote a feminist agenda. And let me be clear, by feminist agenda, I'm not talking about a campaign to raise awareness of uh, women being abused. I have no problem with that. But I do have a problem with the fact the Indy and other left-wing sources constantly, constantly, constantly promote this idea of female victimhood versus so-called male privilege. I think it's dangerous. Because they're not actually doing anything progressive. If, if they'd done that and then balanced it out with areas where men are suffering, then I would think, okay, good, they're being objective, they're being balanced. But all they're doing is basically promoting uh, the feminist agenda, which is based on um, selective suffering. And it's so difficult to talk about this, because we live in a society where feminism is incredibly powerful. There's this notion that feminists are sort of um, this slightly annoying uh, lobby group. Actually, feminism is deeply embedded in British culture these days. I believe that. And far from being a patriarchy, I think we've actually become a matriarchy. Um, the newsreader Michael Burke made a documentary about this a few years ago, and uh, I think he raised some important points. I'm not saying I agree with everything he said, but 
he did raise some important points. And incidentally, I'm not a supporter of patriarchy, patriarchy either. I think both patriarchy and matriarchy are damaging. If you are a true egalitarian, then you will support this campaign because violence against women is abhorrent and it is a problem. But you will also say, well, yeah, that's wrong. But let's also talk about uh, male victims of domestic violence. They cannot even come forward. They don't have a voice. Because if they try to, they're laughed at. And police forces across the country are guilty of not taking it seriously until it's too late. And when we talk about uh, abuses, remember, it isn't just physical. People who are guilty of domestic violence use psychological abuse as well. And I believe women are much more guilty of this. You know, um, I've already mentioned there are some women who will use children um, as a weapon against ex-husbands. I think that's utterly despicable. And I'm not saying this is always the case. I don't want to exaggerate. It's not. I'm not saying every woman who is in a divorce situation does that. But the fact of the matter is there are some incredibly spiteful, selfish and cold-blooded women out there who will do that. And it's absolutely disgusting. Not only is it cruel towards the children, because they're denying those children um, access to one parent, but it is it is cruel towards the man because it is it's psychological warfare basically. And there are vindictive, spiteful women out there who will lie through their teeth, who will put down men by saying they're not a real man. And uh, I see this all the time from feminists: oh, we must have a small penis, etc., etc., etc. And it's basically disgraceful. You know, I often see uh, stuff on Facebook like, real men respect women. Fair enough. But how about, for once, real women respect men? Why does it always, always, always have to be so one-sided? The feminists claim they're all about equality. I've yet to see them prove it. Because as far as I'm concerned... The feminist movement is about selective suffering. In other words, we'll focus on problems that women do face, but we're going to trivialise, ignore, and actually stand in the way of male suffering. Stand in the way, what I mean by that is standing in the way of justice. I'm not a, I am not a masculist. What I mean by that is I'm not, you know, I, I am not a men's rights activist in the sense that I don't endorse everything they do. Because I think they have become in some ways just as extreme and hypocritical as the feminist movement. Because men's rights activists, some of them actually deny that violence against women exists. I saw one guy claiming, oh, it's all lesbians beating up lesbians, which is a lot of rubbish. Um, as men, we need to accept that this is a huge problem. Um, and by the way, it is a big problem whenever um, football, a uh, local football team loses a match that is a serious problem. So let me just be clear. I have no problem with this campaign. I just wish that um, men's issues weren't completely ignored. Which they are. So all I'm saying is let's have some balance. Let's by all means promote these things. But let's also recognise that there are issues that impact men. And the media just refuses to do it. I can't think of any media source um, that will do this. I mentioned the sun done it once, but it's not, it really isn't uh, something that is done as much as it should be. Because there are enormous issues that impact men. It's just that they aren't spoken about. Because men are expected to be tough. They're expected to get over it. And because feminism is so powerful in Western society, it has managed to actually, in my opinion, I do believe um, that feminist ideology controls part of the media. That might sound like a conspiracy theory, but when you look at the number of the amount of material that has a feminist bias, it's unbelievable. I love women, and I will always stand up for women's rights, but that does not mean that I believe that men's issues should be ignored. And some so-called feminists, uh, what I mean by that is. 
if they really believe in equality, they would prove it. Now, the fact of the matter is there are spiteful, vindictive women out there who use psychological abuse. And there are violent women as well. Let's just recognise that. There are. So all I'm saying is let's have some equilibrium here. Because these sort of um, gotcha headlines, these sort of uh, headlines are, t are intended to grab attention by sweeping statements about men. I just, I'm getting so sick of them. And The Independent, which is a paper I otherwise support, is very guilty of this. The Guardian does it as well, the BBC does it. I'm getting fed up with it. So by all means promote this, but in the next article why not talk about um, an issue that impacts men, i.e. the fact that um, most homeless people are men. But you just don't see it, and I think that's very sad.